Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes, it's your boy Innocence, and today we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck. But realistically speaking, you could even expand the logic I'm going to be talking about in this video to smartphones too. The general idea being, why you're probably not going to see anything larger than a 720 display on handheld gaming devices for a while. Now, as a lot of you guys pointed out in the comment section of my last video, most Switch Pro rumors before the unveiling of the Switch OLED didn't actually anticipate a 4K screen on the device itself but rather a 4k output mode when it was docked and let me just say that makes a lot more sense than what i had initially envisioned i was under the impression that tons of switch owners wanted a 4k screen on the thing and that makes about as much sense as a solar powered flashlight and you know what's crazy having a mobile device output native 4k in any capacity even when docked is also just as implausible i mean it took us until 2020 for home consoles to reliably gain that ability and those things have fans larger than the switch itself now there were rumors that the Switch Pro was coming with NVIDIA's, who is a graphics tech and AI company's, NVIDIA's tensor cores, which could be used to upscale lower resolution outputs to 4K at near lossless quality. But even that to me is a bit of a stretch, at least with currently available tensor cores. Since baking those things in alongside traditional computing methods like the CPU and GPU in a single package has led to some pretty massive physical compute units that would be difficult to put on something like a Switch without a bigger fan. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, there are reasons for both why it might be too early for a 4K screen or even a 4K output on something as sleek and mobile as a Nintendo Switch. But let's humor the idea of a 4K screen on a Switch for a second. I know a 4K output would be slightly more plausible, but that topic is a bit more nuanced and up for a debate, so I'll probably leave that for another video. Anywho, the way I see it, Nintendo has two ways forward with their next console, and I don't mean the Switch OLED, I mean the next Switch whenever that comes out. Either they invest in increasing graphics power to make current generation Switch graphics potentially be able to output at 4K, or get it close enough so that AI can do the rest of the work, or they can give the developers more headroom when creating new experiences so that their games don't look like, well, this. Because both definitely aren't going to happen. Because if I'm a Switch owner, I'd rather improve on how my games look before worrying about the resolution they're being rendered at. I mean, look at the base PS4, I'll put in games like The Last of Us Part 2 probably at 1080p and still having it look like butter. And I'd argue that this game at 1080p looks a lot better than tons of other games at 4K. In my opinion, and I reiterate my hot take opinion, Asking for a 4K output switch would be like trying to play Minecraft in 4K. Like what are you trying to see, sharper pixels? Hot opinion aside, the technology for mobile gaming just isn't there yet, and I know some of you guys are gonna be like, but in a sense, why'd you have to do Breath of the Wild like that? It actually looks really good. It's an aesthetic. All right, all right, cut the music. Let's not kid ourselves. This game? looks objectively bad compared to other games. Now I'm not saying you can't like it, heck, I like it, but let's not sit here and argue that this game's graphics aren't technologically inferior to anything that has been put out by the last two generations of consoles by either Microsoft or Sony. Like I really don't think anybody can argue against that, but hey, if you have a different opinion, feel free to drop it down below in the comments. So for the next Switch, the Switch 2 let's call it, we're going to have to either have better graphics or higher resolutions and frame rates, and personally, I'd go with better graphics, especially since Nintendo usually doesn't stat chase like Microsoft or Sony to impress potential buyers. Now, now you might be wondering, Innocence, why can't we have both, you know, both better graphics and better resolutions and frame rates on the next generation of the Switch? Well, that's because unlike the PS5 or Xbox Series X, this thing is designed to be mobile, and it's also not going to come with a massive AC power adapter brick built in, or at least I don't think it will. And like I've said already, mobile technology just isn't there yet, so some sacrifices will definitely have to be made. Now maybe that's just me, but it's a perfect segue into why having a mobile Switch device that has a 4K screen doesn't make any sense. Of course, everything in this video to a certain extent is my opinion, though it's a pretty good opinion. If you ask me, I think it is. So let's get straight into it. So by now, most of us probably know why a 720p resolution on devices as small as the Steam Deck or Switch OLED might be optimal, but for those of us who don't and still have their doubts, this video is for you. 
Let me introduce you guys to the concept of PPI or pixels per inch. Now on a screen the size of the Nintendo Switch OLED, which is about a 7 inch diagonal, you will have around 210 pixels per inch or a 210 PPI, which is basically how many pixels of that total 1280 by 720 resolution falls into one square inch of its screen. Now for the sake of example, let's now imagine the new Switch had a 4K resolution of 3840 by 2160 and a newly formed PPI of 630. Let's also assume that we have a high quality near 4K TV with an arbitrarily lower resolution of 3500 by 1970, but it is 65 inches in size, therefore a PPI of 62. If I were then to perform a blind device test on a random selection of you guys and ask you to pick whichever display you thought looked better, the majority of you probably would have picked the TV. Why? Because there's so much more at play when it comes to what makes a display look good, and some of them are arguably more important than resolution. For instance, like we've been discussing, PPI. A display with a higher PPI will almost always look better than one with a lower measurement because it serves to reason that pixel density is infinitely more important than total pixel count. You know, you could have an a million by a million pixel display, but if it's the size of Africa with a PPI of 1, it'll look terrible from outer space. In my opinion, pixel density is more important than pixel count. And since the Switch has such a small 7 inch screen, putting a 4K display on that would be pure indulgence and unnecessary. And don't worry, I see you screaming at your screen saying, come on man, then why'd you say I'd pick a near 4K TV with a PPI of 62 over a hypothetical 4K switch with a PPI of 630? 630 is obviously higher than 62, so what gives? Well, in comes another equally important factor of what determines a good looking screen. Viewing distance. You see, human eyes are pretty weird things. Interestingly enough, once you reach a certain threshold PPI, the human eye loses the ability to reliably distinguish pixel count at higher levels. Human eyes couldn't tell you the difference between a 4K switch and a 1080p switch even if it tried its hardest, because both those PPIs are already high enough for how far your eyes are going to be when looking at that 7 inch screen. There's actually a famous quote by Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, that goes like this. It turns out there's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch that when you hold something around 10 to 12 inches away from your eyes is the limit of the human retina to differentiate the pixels. Given a large enough viewing distance, all displays eventually become retina. And what this means is that a combination of resolution, pixels per inch, and viewing distance all affect the ability of the human eye to reliably distinguish different displays. Well, that and display type, but that's a whole nother beast for a whole nother video. And what Jobs is trying to say here is that, given any display with any PPI, put a certain amount of distance between you and said display, and your eyes will never be able to differentiate sharpness even if the resolution was increased. An extreme example would be, hold the 4K TV a football field away from you next to an 8K TV and see which one is which. Obviously, they're too far away to be able to tell. And that magic distance for each PPI later became an integral part in designing Apple Retina display technology the more you know. And of course, there have been multiple people and companies who think this ratio should be higher, lower, more strict, less strict, and blah 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 blah. But given that Apple is literally the richest company on the planet, let's just stick with the definition they provided. And I'm not an Apple fanboy, trust me, they get on my nerves just as much as the next guy. But using the Apple Retina display equation that tons of kind people over the internet have recreated based on the original definition provided, and a bunch of trigonometry, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> You can see that for a 720p 7 inch screen like the Switch OLED has, after about 16 inches or 1.3 feet, your eyes literally would not be able to tell the difference between a 48k display and the 720p one it has. It would literally just be a waste of money to put it in there. So unless you're constantly gluing your eyes to your Switch on every playthrough, in which case I feel bad for your eye doctor, a 4k display on a device that small would be pointless. Now there might be an argument for 1080p, sure, just to bring that in indistinguishable viewing distance down to below 12 inches. But anything other than that? And you should not be gaming with your Switch this close to your face and I'm mad a random guy over the internet like myself had to tell you that. <laughs> not to mention, let's say the Switch or the Steam Deck did have a 4K display. 
putting in actual hardware that could drive that resolution in a handheld gaming device would have been impossible for today's technology. But hey, maybe we could check back in 2030. But as of right now, you would have been limited to watching 4K YouTube videos, which you could probably already do for free on your living room TV. And just to wrap things up completely nice and tidy, the indistinguishable viewing distance for the hypothetical 65 inch 3500 by 1970 resolution TV I mentioned earlier would have been 54 inches or just four and a half feet. And 99% of the people with a TV this big will be sitting more than four and a half feet away from it, so it already looks as sharp as your eyes could reasonably tell apart. Hence why I said the majority of people would pick the hypothetical near 4K TV when pitted against the hypothetical 4K switch, since the TV is bigger and probably could get brighter and offer more color contrast. For both displays, your eyes would have been far enough away where the resolutions didn't matter, and it would have been up to personal preference which was chosen. I just simply guessed that most people would have gone with the bigger display. And to sum everything up, depending on your screen's resolution and size, you can obtain a value called PPI, or the pixel density of your display. And using this pixel density measurement, there exists a distance at which your eyes can't tell the difference between it and higher pixel densities anymore. Of course, this distance might vary from person to person, and definitions might vary from company to company, but generally speaking, it is agreed upon that once you hit this indistinguishable pixel distance, it does not matter how much more you increase the resolution and thereby the PPI of the display, because your eyes couldn't tell you what happened anyway. So counterintuitively, increasing the resolution when viewing past this point doesn't serve to increase the picture quality of the display once you've already ventured past that line, but instead increases the quality of the display up close and shortens the distance at which you would be able to tell it apart. I hope future me is able to animate this in such a way that it makes sense. But for large 4K displays like televisions or even the 720p Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck, as long as you aren't literally gluing your eyes to the screen or literally trying to pixel peep, you'll never be able to tell the difference. Just use the devices as they're intended, sitting an adequate distance away from your large television and keeping your handheld gaming device a little less than arm's length away. Adding such a 4K display on a mobile device would only serve to drain battery life and not be fully utilized by the current mobile gaming technology. If you disagree, feel free to let me know down below in the comments, just know that if you do disagree, you're wrong. Now this entire video wasn't to imply that 4K displays on handhelds will never happen in the future, I actually think that they definitely will. Because if you look at the mobile phone space, it's become an arms race for who could have a higher pixel count on the same size display over the generations. Essentially Samsung and Apple are fighting for resolution bragging rights at this point, not actual practicality. Because you'd be hard pressed to tell me the difference between an iPhone 11 Pro Max screen and an iPhone 12 Pro Max screen in a blind test, despite the iPhone 12 having a substantially higher pixel count. Yet, the mobile space's resolutions continue to climb and climb and climb, so I have no doubt that so will handheld gaming devices. That doesn't mean it makes sense though. And that's what this video was about. Anywho, ladies and gents, that's gonna bring us to the end of the video, so please let me know what you guys think about the topic of resolutions and the recent disappointment that the Steam Deck and Switch are still 720p. Do you agree with what I've mentioned in this video and think that it doesn't really matter? Or do you think that I forgot something and that higher resolution screens offer just a different level of quality that could definitely be told apart? I'd like to hear all of your opinions, so please drop a comment down below. But with that being said, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you dislike the dislike, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a future upload on the channel. Oh, and hit that bell notification button if you're so inclined. I've been Innocence. You've been the audience. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>